the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, as we still rejoice in this octave of Christmas, celebrating the birth of our Lord, we today celebrate in England a special solemnity, the Solemnity of St. Thomas of Canterbury, Bishop and Martyr. St. Thomas Becket. Uh, we are in the 12th century. St. Thomas, Archbishop of Canterbury, is considered the martyr of the liberties of the Church against that usurpation of the King. In the 12th century, the quarrel was with King Harry the second who wished him to sanction customs contrary to the liberty of the church, to the nature of the church, to the uh, right of the church to exist and to freely exercise her uh, uh, cult, her worship, and, and also having her on constitution. St. Thomas knew that uh, to make a divine society, which is the Church, sub subservient to the secular power would be to violate the very constitution, divine constitution of the Church. And therefore, as bishop, he would willingly suffer death in defense of the Church of Christ. He stood up and was, in fact, martyred for this. He was slain in his cathedral by the king's soldier on December 29, 1170. This example of St. Thomas Becket is important because that uh, testimony in the 12th century was a, an important uh, witness to the church and uh, he was preparing another big uh, contraposition between the church and the king, in fact, with King Henry VIII. The, uh, the church was completely, in a way, submitted to the royal power, to the political power. The first attempt is here with St. Thomas Becket, the temptation. All the time, in every country, everywhere the church is, is to submit the church to the political power, possibly to make a, uh, that political power into a religion in some way, where the Pope and the sacraments and the divine constitution of the Church is completely subject to that political power, because in this way, the political power is a kind of divine power. He becomes a divine power, something that is unquestionable. This is very uh, much uh, liked by those people in power to have a kind of divine uh, blessing on any political choice. But we have to, re to remind ourselves of the gospel of Christ, to understand precisely the necessary distinction between a political power and the presence of God in this world through Christ, through his church. You remember, of course, the gospel in which our Lord says, give to Caesar's what is uh, Caesar's and give to God what is God's. The point is to see Caesar and God as distinct, but at the same time in a hierarchical uh, ordination. First God, then Caesar. The Church 
claims always her independence, her freedom to give to God what is God's and to give first of all to God what is God's, helping all people in this society, not only the believers, but the whole people of good will to put always God first and his rights first. To have a church completely subservient sub, sub, sub to the political power is basically to ignore the precedence of God over all other things, over Caesar, but over constitution, a positive law, any, any decision taken in a parliament. The church needs to be independent, always to tell possibly a parliament, uh, a political power, that that law passed perhaps is against common good. It is against the natural law, which is a reflection of the divine eternal law. This is the reason why St. Thomas Becket stood preparing uh, even worse moments in history, but that his uh, testimony was necessary to always remind ourselves of this necessary independence from any civil, political authority. Independence, liberty, which does not mean the capacity to do anything we wish, because the liberty has always its uh, boundaries within the truth, but the liberties in the sense that the church can never be uh, some uh, subject to a political power. The church needs her independence to still celebrate the sacraments, to still exercise freely her cult, her worship, to still direct the consciences of believers and non-believers according to some principles which are not political but uh, natural, inscribed by God, uh, by his creation in man's heart. This freedom uh, eventually is the freedom to live for God, the freedom not to sin, the freedom to keep the presence of God in ourselves, and in this way to keep God present in this society. This is the nature of the church. This is the mission of the church. If we look at uh, what happened here with Harry VIII, in fact, his attempt was to transform his political stand into a kind of new religious uh, power to decide freely and according to his own wish what is the sacrament of marriage, when that sacrament is valid. But this is an attempt to start telling the church whether to still celebrate this sacrament and all the sacraments according to the divine constitution of the church or to not to celebrate anymore these sacraments. A church again subservient to the secular power is a church stripped of her uh, nature, of her power, divine power, which comes first the divine power to celebrate the faith, the liturgy, the sacraments, to save souls. The mission of the church is not a political mission, but the only uh, reason for which the church does exist is to be in this world the visible, mystical body of Christ for the salvation of all souls. But for this mission, Freedom is necessary. Freedom to say, God is always first. And with Saint another great martyr, we should repeat Saint Thomas more. Uh, 
the king's uh, humble and faithful servant, but God's fast. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.